The video that you guys are about to listen to, the 2022 Pittsburgh Steelers full NFL mock draft was recorded on April 3rd, 2022. And I just received breaking news that sadly Dwayne Haskins has passed away at the age of 24. I do want to send my condolences and my prayers to his family and his wife. I've seen some dumb comments by Adam Schefter and Gil Brandt. You're not going to see those comments on this. I just want to touch on this before I get into the actual part of the video before I transition over. Dwayne Haskins had a lot more to give to this world than just being a quarterback and just being a football player in general. The man had a wife and he had a family. So my condolences are to his family and to his wife. It's a sad situation. Every teammate on social media seemed like they loved this guy. He seemed like he was a great person. And it just shows to those two men and Adam Schefter and Gil Brandt, they made those dumb comments that some people just look at people just being football players. But Dwayne Haskins was more than that. He was a great human being. And wrestling power, man, you'll be severely missed on earth. It's just a sad situation. What's up, YouTube? We're back with another video. Hit the subscribe button if you're new. It's All Pro Sports Talk, the home of Sports Talk. Today, we're going to discuss the Pittsburgh Steelers' full seven round mock draft after their free agency signings. After signing guys like Mitch Trubisky and Miles Jack, we're going to talk about their best needs and their biggest needs for this team. So let's just jump straight into it. With the 20th pick in the first round, at the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Tyler Linderbaum, center from Iowa. Now, I do believe that they'll have to trade up for Tyler Linderbaum if he does not follow them this way. Like I said, a lot of teams in quarterback heavy and just trading up and just try to get a quarterback and get some wide receivers. Either way, slice it, I believe the Pittsburgh Steelers should try to select Tyler Lindebaum, and I believe he will drop to the 20th spot. I currently had Tyler Lindebaum going to the New York Giants, but it seems like things have changed in the New York Giants' way. Tyler Lindebaum is... You can make the argument he's the best offensive lineman in his class. A very nasty run-blocking center who can just be an identity for your offensive line for years to come. He reminds me so much of Quinn Nelson. He's one of those can't miss prospects at his center position. I do believe that the Pittsburgh Steelers will have to trade up and I do see him falling to the 20th spot with the draft picks in front of him. I think, like I said, a lot of teams will get quarterback heavy, will get wide receiver heavy, or even try to get some extra pass rushes in his class. And I do believe he's one of those offensive linemen that can slip down. A lot of people are not talking about him and not giving him that love, but he's been the best consensus offensive lineman in this class by far behind Evan Neal. And a lot of people like to put Akim, Akeem Aquanu over him. I just believe from a technical standpoint that Tyler Lindebaum is the best offensive lineman in this class. With the 52nd overall pick, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Abraham Lucas, offensive tackle from Washington State. Yes, two offensive linemen back to back. Abraham Lucas can come in, he can play some offensive guard and also play some offensive tackle, but he will be a solid right tackle for his team. I understand the Pittsburgh Steelers did sign Ch Chakul Okafor to a long-term extension, but he's one of those guys that got better as the season went on, but they do have Dan Moore Jr. at the other tackle position. You can slide in Abraham Lucas right there, 6'7", 332 pounds. He's a phenomenal pass blocker straight out the gate. The only thing with him is his run blocking. He's not a guy that's used to blocking against and trying to help the run game because he comes from a team in Washington State. All they did was throw the football. So he's an air raid type of tackle. It does raise some concerns there. But the Pittsburgh Steelers need more offensive line protection. He's going to be a day one guy that can come in and can help out on the offensive line on that side of the football when it comes to blocking the fast defensive ends and blocking guys to secure the edge and help protect Mr. Trubisky going forward. With the 84th overall pick out the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Nick Cross, safety from Maryland. Just a rangy safety, 6'1", 210 pounds, elite run stopper. The Pittsburgh Steelers have yet to settle in on that strong safety position. They have Mika Fitzpatrick at free safety. Terrell Edmonds is still a free agent. And they were trying to look and sign Teran Matthew. As I record this video, they have not signed Teran Matthew yet. And they have not re-signed Terrell Edmonds. But I do see them trying to get more safety depth regardless if they do sign, re-sign Terrell Edmonds or Teron Matthew. Nick Cross is not one of those guys you want to have on the back end and play single high safety, but that's what you have Mika Fitzpatrick for. Nick Cross is aggressive safety. He's not that great in coverage, but he's an elite run stopper. He's an aggressive type of safety. He reminds me a lot of Jamal Adams. He can play in the box, and he does offer some protection in the pass game when it comes to being those red zone situations. In the red zone situations, he can body up a tight end. He can defend well against the slant routes. It's just long field situations. You do not want him to be single high safety, and he did not play that role at all when he was in college. He's more of an uber aggressive safety, hyper athleticism, and he's one of those guys on day one can come in and offer instant impact. He can play some down linebacker for you as well. And we know that is something Mike Tomlin has done before with safeties like Marcus Allen. 
and put him in that middle linebacker position, you just you can do the same thing with Nick Cross. With the 138 overall pick at the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Romeo Dobbs, wide receiver from Nevada. The Pittsburgh Steelers lost Juju Smith-Schuster in free agency to the Kansas City Chiefs, and they also lost James Washington to the Dallas Cowboys. So they need some wide receiver depth in there. They have Deontay Johnson. They have Chase Claypool. Romeo Dobbs stands at 6'2", 204 pounds. In 2021, he had 80 receptions, 1,000. 100 1109 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns explosive wide receiver when it goes, comes to moving down the field and he has a big frame and he fits that pitch versus this type of wide out he reminds me a lot of chase claypool just not as big with the frame he's a little skinnier but he's still explosive and we know the pittsburgh Steelers can develop receivers from any school this man right here can run every single route for how big he is he does need some help with the zig route. That's the only route that bothered me on this film. But every other route, he can run that. He can body up corners in the secondary. And in play action situations, he can run past the safety. And you can throw a lot of things to him on the end around play and let him just get the ball in his hand. Just let him be a freak, explosive athlete that he is in open field. I believe having him, Chase Claypool, and Deontay Johnson would be a nice trio moving forward for the Pittsburgh Steelers and Mr. Trubisky and having Najee Harris on the back end as well as that receiving running back and per runner that he is. With the 208th overall pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Michael Clemens, defensive end from Texas A&M. Standing at 6'5", 270 pounds, he's a good pass rusher. Last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers run stopping defense was not the same as it was years before. Tyson Lau got hurt at the defensive tackle position and Stephon Tewitt missed the entire season. This man right here can slide in immediately, offer you a lot of pad rush and offer you a lot of run stopping depth as well. The Pittsburgh Steelers need to make a decision on Stephon Tewitt. It seems like he will be back, but just in case things do not look the same with Stephon Tewitt, you slide in Michael Clemens. He has that big frame, 6'5", 270 pounds, and he's also quick off the edge as well. He could be a developmental defensive end for you for years to come. And like I said, you can put him in on, on those goal line situations. He'd be extra aggressive to stop the run. With the 225th overall pick at the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting, Abram Smith running back from Baylor. Excellent pass catcher. He's a good guy when they actually decide to pass him the ball, he was catching the ball. He is one of those guys that was using a straight run system with Baylor, but he can pass the ball. He can be a good backup to Najee Harris. They ran Najee Harris a lot last season. Case in point, he ended up getting hurt last season as well, hurt his elbow. They need to slow down the mileage on Najee Harris. I get that he was a first round pick last year, but you can have a one-two punch with Abram Smith and Najee Harris. Put both of those guys in there, say some miles on Najee Harris' body, and you just put in Abram Smith in those third down situations while using Najee Harris to still be the premier back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And with the last pick in the draft, the 241st pick at the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting Chase Wells, linebacker from Colorado, 6'4", 250 pounds. The Pittsburgh Steelers did go out in free agency and they did sign Miles Jack, but Chase Wells can come in immediately, be extra depth right behind Miles Jack. He's quick on his feet, very physical down the hill type of linebacker that Mike Tumlin likes. He's defends well against RPO systems. He's another guy that adds more depth to the Pittsburgh Steelers team that needs depth and they need more run stoppers on this team. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to go by the virtue of old school, run the football and stop the run. And a guy like Chase Wells is going to do that coming out of Colorado. He's a Steelers type of linebacker. You look at him in 2021, 51 total tackles, one forced fumble, six sacks and one interception that went for a touchdown. He's a do-it-all linebacker. He can come off the edge, but he's primarily an inside linebacker. And I believe Mike Tomlin and Brian Flores can mold this type of guy to being a top tier linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers just a couple years from now. But until then, he will sit on the bench and be good depth. So let's do an overview of this draft. With the 20th pick at the Pittsburgh Steelers selecting, Tyler Lindebaum, center from Iowa, with the 52nd overall pick at the Pittsburgh Steelers, selecting Abraham Lucas, offensive tackle from Washington State. 84th pick, Nick Cross, safety from Maryland. 138th overall pick, Romeo Dobbs, wide receiver from Nevada. 208th overall pick, Michael Clemens, defensive end from Texas A&M. The 225th pick, Abram Smith, running back from Baylor. And the 241st overall pick, Chase Wells, linebacker from Colorado State. If you like this video, Hit the like button. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the mock draft, let me know in the comment section. Also, I want each and every last one of you guys to stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching my video, guys. Peace.